Alrighty, everybody, let's read again. Um, today we're going to go over uh, pacemakers. We're going to just do a kind of a broad overview of what types of pacemakers that um, we need to know about and some general understanding of how they work and how can we identify um, the pacemaker and pacemaker mode on an EKG. Because we're going to talk about EKGs. And so first, I want to go through the different types of pacemakers. And the first type of pacemaker is going to be what we call a single chamber. And so you could have a single chamber being paced, either the atria or the ventricle. If the atria is being paced, that might be, say, due to something that, you know, some, some type of disease state that's inhibiting uh, atrial depolarization. So maybe... Uh, six sinus syndrome, you might see an atrial pacing. And then you might see uh, ventricular pacing in this single mode, maybe somebody that lives with a third degree AV block with normal uh, sinus node function. Right, so a single chamber pacemaker relies on the fact that this individual has a normal other side of conduction. So if they've got an atrial pacemaker, they must have normal AV function. If they've got a ventricular pacemaker, they must have normal SA function in order for that side of the, of the house to work. The next type of pacemaker, and this is the, kind of the gold standard, the dual chamber. So dual chambers, as their name implies, have a lead in the atria and in the ventricles. And so if this is my pacemaker device right here, this pacemaker device would not only have a lead in the atria, it would also have a lead down in the ventricle. So that's a good example of a dual chamber pacemaker. And then the last type of pacemaker, we're not really going to talk about this much today, is a, is a bi-ventricular pacemaker. And that's a pacemaker that, I'm just going to do this just for visual sake, is it's got a lead in both ventricles. So that really is important if you want to synchronize the ventricles if somebody uh, if their cardiac output is dependent on the synchrony of ventricular squeeze and depolarization being at the same time so you could synchronize that like I said we're not really going to talk about uh, the biventricular pacemaker today because they're really not that common definitely not compared to the other two and so, now that we've said this is the type of pacemaker that we could have, we now need to know how do they work. And so this is going to be something that we'll, we'll get more, you know, have more understanding of as we go through the lecture. But we're going to just go ahead and define the modes of pacing. And first, we need to understand that there's a nomenclature associated with this, and it's a letter system. It's a four-letter system, and I'll go through some examples. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm a little sick. So letter one in this nomenclature is going to be, uh, it's going to signify the area being paced. So that's either going to be the letter A for atria, V for ventricles, D for dual or both, and O for neither. Letter two is going to be the area being sensed. That's going to be labeled as the same thing. Either we're sensing the atria, we're sensing the ventricles, we're sensing dual or both, or we're sensing neither. So what that what the sensing means is going to be that say. Say this person has this ventricular lead down here, 
So they have this ventricular lead that's sitting in the in the right ventricle. And say there's a beat that comes from the SA node, causes atrial depolarization. AV node picks up that signal and sends it down, causing ventricular depolarization. Well, if this ventricular lead senses that that beat arrived, if it senses that, then it can uh, change how it reacts. And so letter three in this is going to signify the um, response to sensing. And we either say it's going to be um, O for no response, I for inhibited, T for triggered, and D for dual or both. And so in this example that I gave you, the ventricles depolarized, and that depolarization was sensed by this ventricular lead. And in this case, when it is sensed, we don't need to pace the ventricle. And so in this case, we're going to inhibit it so that it doesn't fire. And so that's what I mean by what are we sensing? And then what are we doing when we sense that beat? And we'll go more into some specific examples here in a little bit. And then letter four, which I'm not really going to dive into, is going to signify rate adaptation. Adaptation. And rate adaptation is going to be designated by a zero for none and they are for yes, it is adapted to rate. So that just means that the settings are going to change for the timing of pacing based on how fast that the heart rate needs to be or is. So that's something that we're going to really dive into because that's a little bit more detailed than what we need. And so now that we've said that, let's go through some common examples of pacemaker uh, modes and just start to understand the concept of, depending on what mode we're in, how is that going to uh, um, look on an EKG? And so let's start off with, say, um, atrial pacing. And so say we've got this pacemaker lead sits right here in the atria and say we have um, the mode that is uh, a a i okay so remember this is our ladder system so this means that we are pacing in the atria we are sensing the atria and if we sense we are going to inhibit the pacemaker from firing and so let's go through maybe a scenario of what that would look like so we've got our atrial lead and this atrial lead it's sitting here and what's it doing it's waiting for the atria to depolarize. And there's a programmed amount of time that it's going to wait for. That's going to be set by the cardiologist, the electrophysiologist. And if that time passes and the SA node doesn't fire and cause atrial depolarization, this pacemaker is going to go, okay, I'm going to handle business. I'm going to make sure the atria depolarize. So if that's the case, we're going to get a shock from that pacemaker in the atrial lead. And what that's going to look like on an EKG is it's going to be flat, and there's going to be this 
pacemaker spike. So this is our pacemaker spike or pacing spike. And then immediately following the pacemaker spike, we're going to get atrial depolarization. And if that's the case, we're going to have this P wave, this very nice, pretty P wave. What's going to happen? The AV node is going to take that signal from the depolarizing atria, and it's going to signal the ventricles to depolarize through our nice Hisperkinji system, nice and rapid depolarization, as long as they don't have any issues with their ventricular conduction system. And so we'll have, after a normal PR interval, a narrow QRS, and then a T wave. All right, so that's our normal PR interval here. So that's what it looks like if you have atrial pacing. And so that's our first beat where we have the atrial pacing spike that causes the P wave. And what happens if on the next beat, so I'm gonna erase some of this. So after that beat, we're waiting again for the next beat, right? So this pacing wire is sitting here. What's it doing? It's waiting. And say the next beat, the sinus node says, you know what, I'm gonna work this time. And so the next beat, the sinus node says, all right, I'm gonna fire and I'm gonna depolarize the atria. And that occurs on time. And so that depolarization is gonna be sensed by the pacemaker because we said it was sensing in the atria. And so what we're gonna see is we're going to see a normal depolarizing atria, so we're going to see a normal P wave, and there's going to be no pacing spike. No pacing spike, because the sinus node in this, this beat did its thing. So there's going to be no pacing spike, and then there's going to be atrial depolarization, and then our AV node will pick it up, send it down to the ventricles, conduct that signal the way we, we know it does, we're going to have a normal, completely normal waveform. So this is an example of somebody who's got an atrial sensing pacemaker. In this beat, the SA node didn't fire on time, which caused the pacemaker to fire causing our pacing spike. That is what is in front of the P wave. But then as the pacemaker was waiting for the next beat, we saw that our SA node did its thing early enough so the pacemaker didn't need to work, right? And this time is programmed into the pacemaker. Okay, so that's like an atrial pacing. And so a good example of what somebody who's being atrial paced looks like is right here. And so if you look at this EKG, you've got QRSs that are occurring regularly at a rate of 300, 150, 175, probably 65 beats per minute. In front of each QRS, you've got these P waves. But if you notice, there's this pacing spike that occurs. And immediately following the pacing spike, you've got this P wave. So that tells me that these pacing spikes, these pacing spikes with P waves right after, are atrial pacemakers. And well, let's follow the rest of the conduction system. So we've got our pacing spike, P wave. And then after a normal PR interval, 200 milliseconds, our AV node is working well. And it sends a signal into the ventricles, creating a narrow QRS. So we know that the AV node is working well. 
So that's how we know that this person has an atrial pacemaker, or at least right now is currently being atrially paced. So let's example of somebody who has a functioning AV node, but probably something wrong with their SA node. And that's why we need to paste their atria. And so now we've gone through some atrial pacing concepts. Let's transition now to maybe a situation where we would see pacing in the solely in the ventricles. And so we're going to say we've got this pacemaker, it's got this lead that's going into the ventricles. Okay. And we're going to give an example of a pacemaker setting that is, say, in this case, I'm going to call it um, VVI. So that means that we are pacing in the ventricle. We are sensing in the ventricle, and if we sense a ventricular beat by our ventricular lead, we will inhibit that ventricular lead from firing, which makes sense. And this is our three-letter system that we said that we would be using for nomenclature. So we're going to say VVI pacing. So let's go over what that would look like. Some examples. Right, this isn't all just clean cut exact every time, but we need to just understand how the system might work. And so, you might see VVI pacing in somebody that might have a competent uh, SA node. So maybe what happens is you've got the SA node here. Maybe this person's AV node. Maybe they have a high grade. AV block, maybe like a second degree type 2, which we know needs a pacemaker, second degree type 2. So that means that some of the P waves will cause a QRS, but not all of them. And so the ones that don't, we need to make sure that we can fire the ventricles with our pacemaker. So this person's got their AV node, their AV node is going to fire. It's going to cause atrial depolarization. And so we know that the EKG after atrial depolarization is going to look like normal P wave. There's a normal P wave. <laughs> and then after that, the AV node is going to grab onto that signal. But in this case, the AV node doesn't conduct the signal. And so the AV node is blocked for this beat. This is one of the beats that the AV node doesn't work. And so we know that this ventricular lead is waiting. It's waiting for X time that is set on the pacemaker for a beat. So it's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting. And after a certain amount of time, if the AV node blocks that signal like we said it does, the node or the pacemaker down here says, okay, I need to fire so that the ventricles can squeeze and we can perfuse the body. And so we fire this pacing lead. On the EKG here, you're going to see a pacemaker spike. It's a pacing spike. So if that happens, what should we expect? We would expect a ventricular depolarization. And we should expect slow ventricular depolarization as this is going from cell to cell, gap junctions, not using the Hisperkinji system. And so what we'll notice is that our QRS is going to probably be really wide, which is our T wave. So we're going to have a wide QRS. That occurs right after a pacing spike. It's going to trigger that wide QRS. And if you think about what should our QRS morphology look like on the EKG, 
Well, if it's arising from the right ventricle, which they always will, these ventricular leads, well, we know that the signal has to go up, and it's going to go from the right ventricle towards the left, so it's going to go up and to the left. And if that's the case, we know that our QRS is going to be negative QRS and AVF as it's going away from, Q, uh, from AVF. And it's going to the left, and so it should be a positive QRS in lead one. And so that's what a ventricular pacing spike would look like as it's causing ventricular depolarization. And so we said this is a VVI pacing. So say the next beat, as, as things happen, right? we said that this person has a second degree type 2 AV block. And so say, in this example, the SA node is healthy, and it fires, and it depolarizes the atria. So the next beat in the conduction system over here on our rhythm strip, we'll see our P wave that happens spontaneously. And say in this case, the AV node is functioning really well for this beat, and it sends the signal down to the ventricles. Well, what are we going to see? We're going to see ventricular depolarization, and it's going to look narrow as it's taking our Hisperkinji system. And what it's going to do is when the ventricles depolarize, this pacing lead is going to sense that it depolarized, because we know it's sensing in the ventricle. It's sensing in the ventricle, and what's going to happen is it's going to inhibit, it's going to inhibit it from firing. And so we won't see a pacing spike, and we'll see our normal QRS that's narrow in our normal T wave. Because in this case, the AV node, which here's our PR interval determined, telling us what our AV node is doing, our AV node worked this time. And if the AV node worked this time, then we can say that we don't need to pace the ventricles, and so that's why our ventricular lead got inhibited. And so that's why you can say that this person is at least in this VVI type of mode. And so let's just take a quick glance at what a ventricular pace rhythm looks like. This is a pretty nice rhythm here. So, you know, we're going to look. We're going to look at what we always do, and we're going to see, okay, we've got QRSs that are occurring regularly. The rate is 300, 150, 175, probably 65 beats per minute-ish. So look at what the atria is doing. And I uh, can't really see much atrial activity. I'm going to zoom in and look at lead one, look at lead two. And I'm not seeing P waves through any of these. Okay, so I see no P waves. Alrighty, so there's, is this, maybe this person could be, you know, this could be a fib. It could be SA node dysfunction. It's hard to tell because you know, these patients are complex. But what we do know is that before every QRS, which we see that these QRSs are wide, so we see a wide QRS, so we know that they're not using the normal Hisperkinji system for their conduction. And right in front of the QRSs, we see this pacing spike. If you notice, you see pacing spike and then wide QRS. You see pacing spike, wide QRS. So that must trigger our mind to think, okay, this person is being paced ventricularly. So we've got ventricular pacing. So 
we know that this is definitely a ventricular pacemaker. And let's scan through the whole rhythm and, huh, look at these wide complex QRSs, wide complex QRSs, and then look at this beat. Look at this beat. Well, that's different. That's narrow. We'll focus in on this beat right here. And let's see what we can find out. Let's investigate maybe what changed. So, I say that this is a beat that has no pacing spike. I don't see a pacing spike like we do for all the other ones. No pacing spike. It's a narrow QRS. So this tells me that the AV node worked for this beat. And if you look in front of the beat, you might even be able to see some atrial activity here. If you can look at the lead above, you might even be able to see some atrial activity. So regardless, some signal was able to get through the AV node and cause ventricular depolarization. And because there was no pacing spike, we know that the ventricular lead, ventricular lead was inhibited by this QRS through the ventricles. So that's how we know that this is at least a sensing lead in the ventricles. So it's a pretty, pretty neat little example there. And that's maybe an example of somebody who's being paced in the ventricles with spikes that occurred just before the QRS. And so now we're going to take you to kind of the, the core of, of what this lecture is all about. And that's going to be dual chamber pacing. And dual chamber pacemakers are the gold standard. And so clinically, you're going to be dealing with much more pacemakers that are of dual chamber quality. So we've got our right ventricular lead, and we've got our atrial lead right here. And so, interestingly enough, dual chamber pacemakers, the, the mode that they use is called, for our letter designation, DDD. So that means we pace in the dual ventricle, or the dual chamber, so both. We sense in both. And then we have a, uh, a response that's variable in both. And so um, usually, um, it, it, it really just depends. And so we'll, we'll go through how that response is varied based on the sensing. And so, um, now that we establish this is DDD, what I'm going to do is there's four distinct patterns of a rhythm that can occur in a dual chamber pacemaker. This is getting confusing, but just bear with me. So there are four distinct patterns of dual chamber pacemaker. Okay. Four distinct patterns. We're going to go one by one and explain how we can identify these patterns. So the first pattern, they're all going to be called something, and so this is an important nomenclature as well, is called atrial sensed Ventricle sensed. So let's go over an example of an atrial sensed, ventricle sensed beat. So we've got our two leads here, our two pacing leads, one in the right atria, one in the right ventricle. And so 
the one in the right atria. The atria beats first, and so this one is waiting. It's waiting for the SA node to fire. Because we know that if the SA node doesn't fire and create atrial depolarization, that this atrial lead will do it for us. But in this case, our SA node decides to fire. It fires like it normally does, and we get atrial depolarization like we typically do. So, what do we get on the EKG? It's going to look like our a nice P wave. And when that atrial depolarization occurs, our atrial lead, it senses atrial depolarization and inhibits the atrial lead from firing. So we're not going to get a pacing spike in the atria because we don't need one. And so say this person's AV node is next to the conduction system. And the AV node, we know, takes typically 200, or really less than 200 milliseconds to conduct that signal down. Right? That's the PR interval. That is kind of the maximum PR interval that we want the AV node to have. And so the atrial lead senses depolarization in the atria, and it starts a timer. And it starts the timer because right now the pacemaker goes, okay, it's the ventricle's turn to depolarize. This lead in the ventricle is waiting for X time. And so if the ventricles depolarize before X time, I don't need the pacemaker in the ventricles for that beat. But if it doesn't, then it might beat for us. But in this case, the timer has started, but our AV node has captured the signal. AV node captures the signal. And for this beat, it sends it down to the ventricles using the Hysterkinji system to cause rapid ventricular depolarization. And the rapid ventricular depolarization is sensed by the ventricular lead and inhibits the ventricular lead. And so the rest of our waveform is going to be this nice narrow QRS and T wave. And so in somebody with a dual chamber pacemaker, if they have an atrial sensed, ventricle sensed uh, beat, it's going to look normal because we didn't need either of the atrial or the ventricular leads to do our job. So that's the first pattern of dual chamber pacing. It was just sitting in the background, sensing, just waiting to do its job. So now I'm going to erase all of these. And we are going to go over our next type of pattern. And pattern number two is going to be atrial sensed ventricle paced. So it's the same concept. Our AV. Our, our atrial pacing lead is waiting for the atria to contract. And in this case, the SA node fires again, causes atrial depolarization. And sensing by our atrial lead, and that inhibits the atrial lead from firing. And so our EKG is going to just have our nice P wave again, no pacing spike. But in this beat, the AV node is blocked. Okay, and remember, once our atrial lead senses, starts a timer, and if too much time goes by before our ventricular lead can sense a QRS, our ventricular lead is going to fire. So in this case, that certain amount of time goes by, and there's no QRS that occurs, 
our ventricular lead goes, okay, if that's the case, I need to fire. And so it's going to fire. And when it fires, it's going to create this pacing spike on our EKG. And then we're going to have depolariz depolarization of the ventricles. And it's going to happen slow from cell to cell as the ventricle uh, depolarizes. And so that's going to create this wide, complex QRS T wave. So this is a wide QRS. Okay. And so that's going to be our atrial sensed ventricle paste uh, type of pattern. You also are going to see this in somebody that's in AFib. Because if somebody's in AFib, and they've got fibrillatory waves going throughout, it's also going to be sensed by the atrial lead all the time. But if they're still blocked here, the atria will sense it, but the ventricles will not be receiving it, and so we will pace the ventricles as well. So you, you can also see a waveform that would be something like this, where you've just got these fibrillatory waves, and then, and so our, our atrial lead is sensing this and being inhibited. But after some time, you might see a pacing spike and a wide complex QRS and a T wave. So that would be somebody with AFib with a heart block who needed atrial sensing and ventricular pacing for their beat. So that's an example of atrial sensed ventricle paced. And now I'm going to kind of erase all this again. And we're going to go through our third type of pattern that we will see with a dual chamber pacemaker. So our third pattern is going to be atrial paste. Ventricle sensed. So that scenario occurs when our atrial lead is waiting for the SA node to fire, but in this case, the SA node doesn't fire in a certain amount of time that is designated by you know the settings of the pacemaker. And so the SA node or the or the Atrial lead says, okay, I need to fire to depolarize this atria and get this cardiac cycle started. And it fires. So on EKG, it's going to look something like this, where you've got a pacing spike and a P wave. That P wave is because the atrial depolarizes after the pacing spike. And in this scenario, that signal gets to the AV node. The AV node does a good job of conducting a signal down to the ventricles. And remember, while the AV node is doing that, our ventricular lead is waiting for X amount of time and saying, all right, I'm waiting for this depolarization to happen in the ventricles. If it doesn't, I need to fire. But in this case, the AV node does its job, sends signal down the Hisper-Kinsey system, depolarizes the ventricles, and as it depolarizes the ventricles like normal, it is sensed by our ventricular lead and inhibits the ventricular lead from firing. And so we'll get our pacing spike, our P wave, and then we'll have our normal QRS and normal T wave. So this would be an example of a time when it was atrial paced, but ventricular sensed. And so that could happen with a dual chamber pacemaker. And then the last type of pacing pattern that we see with dual chamber pacemakers is atrial 
paste ventricle paste. So what this might look like is just like before, our atrial lead is waiting for the SA node to fire. And after a certain amount of time, after X time, it says, you know what? I can't wait any longer. I need to paste the atria. And so it fires. And it's going to create a pacing spike. And after it fires, it's going to depolarize the atria, cause the P wave to occur. And at this point is usually in the cardiac cycle where the AV node picks that up. But in this case, the AV node is blocked for this beat. Right, so maybe this person has third degree block. And so we block the AV node and our ventricular lead is down here waiting for the ventricular depolarization because the pacemaker knows when it paced the atria. And so now the clock starts ticking. But when does the ventricle go to depolarize? If it doesn't by a certain amount of time, if the ventricular lead doesn't sense it, it goes, okay, I don't sense anything, I'm gonna fire. And so we get another pacing spike and then we get ventricular depolarization. But this ventricular depolarization is happening slow, cell to cell, because it's not taking the Hesperkinji system. And so we get our, our Y complex QRS and our T wave. Y QRS. So this is what you would see a waveform of somebody with atrial pacemaker and ventricle pacing. So that would be atrial paste, ventricle paste. And interestingly, the amount of time between the atrial pacing spike and the ventricular pacing spike, that is the time that is programmed into the pacemaker and that's the time that we're saying that that's how long that this ventricular lead is going to wait for that signal to get down. So you can actually determine some of the settings based on the actual length of the difference between the atrial and the ventricular pacing spike and determine, no, what is the setting of this pacemaker? And actually understanding that concept can help you troubleshoot when pacemakers aren't working. We're not going to go into that today. So given that concept, let's take a look at what maybe dual chamber pacing would look like. Remember there's four different modes of a dual chamber pacemaker. And let's figure out what mode is this one. So we've got regularly occurring beats. They're happening at a rate of 300, 150, 175, maybe 70 beats per minute. There's wide QRSs, probably at 160 milliseconds. So it's wide QRS. And when I look at these QRSs, what I notice is that right in front of the QRS, say up here in lead one, I see a pacing spike. That pacing spike is a ventricular spike. But even in front of that, I see another spike, and that's atrial spike. And if you notice, maybe down here in the lead below, in lead two, you can see that after the pacing spike in the atria, you see a P wave. So I can say that this person, their cardiac cycle, they're awaiting. And right here, that atrial lead that was waiting says, all right, I've waited long enough. It's time to, it's time to pace. Because this, the cardiologist that made the settings said, if, if we have to wait for longer than 70 beats per minute, 
we're gonna fire. So it waited, 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 waited. Atrial firing, we get our P wave. And then the ventricles are waiting for that signal to get there. And it's programmed to wait for this long. So we're waiting, 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 and it doesn't happen until we get boom, spike. So we see the spike. And then that causes our wide QRS. If you look at the QRS morphology, it's down in AVF and it's up in lead one. So we know that the QRS axis is up and to the left, which would make sense for a right ventricular lead because it's going to be going up and to the left. So we could say that this is definitely a dual chamber pacemaker. We could say that it's atrial paste, ventricle paste. That's the mode or the pattern of pacing. That's not the mode. The mode here is DDD, but the pattern is atrial paste, ventricular paste. So I want to go back to this EKG. And now that we understand the concept of these dual chamber pacemakers, remember we said that this was atrial pacing, right? And that's evidenced by, if you look, we've got in lead two here, we've got this spike that causes P wave. And then we have this normal PR interval. And then we have a spontaneous QRS. So we know the AV node works. And so in this case, what if I told you, I tell you that this person has a dual chamber pacemaker. Well, if that was the case, then I'm going to ask, I'm going to say, what different pattern, what is the pattern of pacing if this person has a dual chamber pacemaker in the DDD mode. Well, we would say that this person, let's, let's talk through the cycle. So we'll zoom in right here. So our lead is waiting, our atrial lead is waiting, right? This is time on the x-axis. So our atrial lead, if I drew the heart out, I'm gonna draw plus a little heart here. Here's our heart, here's our SA node, here's our AV node, our hiss, and our little branches. And we've got our pacemaker with a lead in the atria and a lead in the ventricle. And so remember that our atrial lead is waiting. So if you go back to this beat, we're waiting, 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 and then too much time goes by, the atria doesn't depolarize, and so we get a spike. And after that spike, we get a P wave. So we get a spike, and then we get a P wave. So that represents that this atrial lead just fired and depolarized the atria. So that is atrial pacing. And then, after it fires, the AV node catches that signal. And while the AV node is doing its thing, our ventricular lead down here in the ventricles, now it's waiting. And so if I go back to the EKG, we're waiting as time is going. It's waiting, waiting, waiting. And you can see, at some point, the AV node sends the signal down and depolarizes the ventricles, right? And so we get a QRS out of this. And the QRS is sensed by our ventricular lead. So that is why there is no pacing spike before our narrow complex QRS. And so we would say that this is what we said, atrial pacing. 
ventricle sensed. So that kind of puts together all the concepts of, of this dual chamber pacemaker. And remember, dual chamber pacemakers are the gold standard. So in the U.S., really, if we're putting in a pacemaker, we're putting in a dual chamber. It's very rare that we wouldn't. Reason why is, you know, you can always change the settings if you need to. And so this is just a great example of uh, uh, the different modes and patterns of pacing with pacemakers. And so what I want you to take away from this lecture is that there's, yeah, there's different types of pacemakers, but really that there's different modes of pacing. We could have the atria is being paced by an atrial lead, which would cause a P wave to occur after a pacing spike. We can have the ventricles being paced, which would be a wide complex QRS that occurs after a pacing spike. Because we know that if we see a pacing spike, we don't know where that pacing spike came from. We don't know if the pacing spike came from the atria or the ventricles, but we know where it comes from if we look at the waveform that occurs after the fact. And then now we got to put those two together and we say, okay, based on the presence or the absence of certain pacing spikes before certain waveforms, specifically P waves and QRSs, what type of pacing are we seeing here? And what is this, and why does it matter? And so that's going to really help you understand, you know, a patient's presentation for, you know, maybe they have syncope. Maybe, uh, you know, you got to determine is the pacemaker working effectively based on the way I programmed it. And so being able to identify the rhythm that is being paced, uh, you can determine, is it functioning appropriately? So if you have any questions, let me know. And if not, have a great rest of your day.